who can fully comprehend her wit? Who can estimate her height? Who can fathom her reach? Who can imagine her depth? And who can understand her scope? The glory of the creation, her beauty, her fascination, and her capabilities leave humans speechless. For instance, we wonder at the Milky Way galaxy which is made of billions of stars and gas and dust all bound together by mutual gravitational attraction it was King David who said The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech, no language, where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the earth, of, of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it. There is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Yes, the, spirit, the creation speaks. We may not always understand what she says. From the barking of dogs to the bellowing of the alligator. From the screaming of the alpaca to the snorting of the antelope. From the growling of the badger to the squeaking of the bat from the roaring of the bear to the buzzing of the bee from the growling of the tiger the lion, the 
des jaguars, des leopards, to the squeaking of the capybara from the meowing of the cat to the lowing of the cattle from the clocking of the chicken to the squeaking of the chinchilla from the chopping of the sea cedar to the clicking of the crab from the clanging of the crane to the chopping of the cricket from the cowing of the cow to the piping of the collie from the bellowing of the deer to the clicking of the dolphin from the brain of the donkey to the quacking of the dog from the screeching of the eagle to the trumpet of the elephant from the bleating of the elk to the duking of the ferret from the buzzing of the fly to the snoring of the fox from the croaking of the frog to the lowing of the gore from the bleating of the giraffe to the ma of the goat from the honking of the goose to the chopping of the grasshopper from the wicking of the guinea pig to the squeaking of the hamster from the chopping of the hermit crab to the growling of the hippopotamus from the buzzing of the hornet to the neighing of the horse from the laughing of the hyena to the gecarin of the jackal from the shrieking 
of the koala to the whooping of the lemo. From the roaring of the leopard to the chuckling of the linnet. From the growling of the lion to the chopping of the locust. From the chattering of the magpie to the howling of the monkey. From the bellowing of the moose to the buzzing of the mosquito. From the squeaking of the mouse to the coffin of the okapi. From the hooting of the owl to the lowing of the ox. From the talking of the parrot to the honking of the peacock. From the duking of the ferret to the bleating of the goat, goat, from the honking of the goose to the chopping of the grasshopper, from the wicking of the guinea pig to the squeaking of the hamster. From the howling of the monkey to the bellowing of the moose. From the whining of the mosquito to the squeaking of the mouse. From the hissing of the owl 
to the lowing of the ox. From the grunting of the pig to the cooing of the pigeon. From the barking of the prairie dog to the calling of the quail. From the quicking, squeaking of the rabbit to the trilling of the raccoon. From the squeaking of the rat to the cawing of the raven. From the barking of the seal to the bleating of the sheep. From the rattling of the snake to the chapping of the song bed. From the squeaking of the squirrel to the trumpeting of the swan. From the squeaking of the tepper to the croaking of the ghetto gecko. From the goblin of the turkey to the singing of the whale. From the grumbling of the wild boar to the lowing of the wild beast. From the baying of the wolf. To the whining of the zebra. Now, we need to realize that in all history, there were only a few men who were able to interact with the creation meaningfully. There was King Solomon who conversed with plants, birds, and animals of all variety. He understood their ways and was able to interpret their mannerisms. No wonder it was described as the wisest man that ever lived. It is believed that no human has ever been able to comprehend the ways of the creation like King Solomon. Also, Saint Paul was able to understand the emotional condition of the creation. He wrote in one of his letters For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travelleth in pain together until now. This man, St. Paul, was able to decipher the feeling of the whole creation and why creation
found herself in the situation that we knew. For instance, the apostle continued, he said, for the annexed expectation of the creation wait for the manifestation of the sons of God for the creature was made subject to vanity not willingly but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. This means that the all of creation at the moment is not at its best. Obviously, as a result of the fall of man, what we see today, what we know today as the creation is really not what it could be. And that is why St. Paul was able to say that we know that the all of creation groaneth and travaileth in pain until now. That is, as a result of the fall, the all of creation is in pain. It is hope that one of these days in the future, we, I mean all humans, shall be able to attain the stature of men like King David and St. Paul. When will we be able to interact more meaningfully with the creation? If you have enjoyed this video, do not forget to like and share. Also, please, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the notification bell. Thank you. I will see you again.